so, so that leads us to a question that some of you may have put aside but was probably on your minds a couple of weeks ago. About three weeks ago on the cover of the uh, New York Times on a Monday morning, I think, or Sunday night, was uh, an article reporting the results of the TCGA. Uh, we're going to get back to this in a moment. There are probably a half dozen people in the audience who could stand up and adequately describe this. Andrew Richardson? I just want to give somebody a chance who's not sitting up here to talk about this. So why don't you describe for the audience what the TCGA is and what it may mean. And I just have to point out many of the specimens that Andrew will talk about came from BCRF supported investigators and institutions around the country. And indeed, BCRF provided a, a substantial um, portion of the funding for this landmark project. So Andrew. So molecular analysis of breast cancers um, really started in depth looking at the mRNA. So that's a particular biomolecule within cancer cells that tell us something about how they're going to look. And so a lot of you have heard about the basal-like and the luminal-like. And so that's based on looking So I'm going to, I'm not to be rude, yep. but I want to make sure everybody understands. So the mRNA is a kind of a copy of a portion of your, of DNA. your genes, the DNA, and it carries instructions ultimately to the cell's machine or to tell it how to make proteins and other molecules that will act. Right. Fair enough? Pretty so that's good. it. So what the TCGA is, is looking at much greater depth. So they started with something around 800 breast tumors. These had to be frozen. And they also had to have a sample of normal DNA from each of the, of the people. And so they had blood samples that had been collected. And so this banking process in finding all of these cancers was the first big obstacle. And I think a lot of the, the support you're talking about is, is in collecting all of these samples from all across the United States to be analyzed in a very deep way. So then once they had all the samples and they had checked the quality, they um, did sequencing. So now the, your DNA in your tumor cells only about 2% of that DNA actually codes proteins, and that's called the exons. And so what the TCGA did was sequence all of the exons. So they did a whole genome exon analysis. And so that tells us all the mutations that are in a tumor in any of the genes that code for proteins. And in parallel, they analyzed the mRNA, the, the, the the part that codes for the proteins. And they also did protein analysis, where they could see which proteins have been activated with a phosphorylation event. And so by looking at the, So just, this, just again, to make it clear, because it, you know, this is like a basic biology primer, just because you have the code to make the protein doesn't mean you make the mRNA. Just because you make the mRNA doesn't mean that it gets translated into the protein. There are lots of steps in there that can go right or go wrong. And so what, what, what Andrew's describing is essentially triple passes through the same question at different levels to see whether it's happening in the steps that it's supposed to, right? Correct. Right. And so this was one of the first, it's, it is the first study that has looked at that, at, at the, a very global way at a big group of breast tumors. And some of the observations, not only finding mu new mutations, so mutation, new genes that are, that are altered in cancer, they did find some new mutations that we now know are cancer genes. But they also um, found that, for instance, the triple negative breast cancers, that their pattern of mutations and chromosome aberrations and protein expression looks much more similar to um, advanced ovarian cancer than it does to the other types of breast cancer. And so it, this was a, an observation that um, we really didn't know before. And it suggests that maybe we should be treating the triple negative cancers and the ovarian cancers in one way and treating the, the luminal or ER positive breast cancers in a different way. So it gave us a, a better understanding of the molecular um, features of cancer and, and how we should be thinking about it and how we should try to start targeting it. Thanks very much. I, I know that I put you on the spot, but what I want everybody to see is the complexity and interconnections uh, because, in fact, there's a TCGA for bladder cancer. There's a TCGA that was previously reported for uh, lung cancer. And what you're starting to see are some themes that go across cancer types, and from that comes a promise for 
more global advance. Uh, for example, if you can take a page from some advances in ovary cancer and apply them to a subset of breast cancers, this is great. And conversely, what we learn in breast cancer may inform the treatment and research in other types of cancer. Cliff, um, could, could I yeah. just add an appendix to what you can. Uh, Andrea Richardson said? The reason why we, what she said is terribly important is the following. Last year, roughly 240,000 women were diagnosed with breast cancer in the United States, and I think about 38,000 died. Now you can ask yourself the question, of those 240,000 women, how many of them would have eventually developed breast cancer if they had not been diagnosed and treated? It's a very critical question. And conservatively, at least half of them had a form of breast cancer, which probably would have remained indolent in their breasts until the age of 85 or 90 and never caused any trouble. The problem is, right now, we can't always tell who should be treated aggressively and who should be uh, treated with what's called watchful waiting. And what we can begin to do now, and what's already started in Europe, is to segregate breast cancers that have been diagnosed into those whose likelihood of progressing is so small that, the, that there's more, more of a downside to treating them aggressively than there is a downside just leaving them be and, uh, with, with the danger of their eventually becoming an aggressive. And so this, this process of stratifying tumors into those that deserve treatment and those that simply one should let be uh, uh, really uh, becomes critically important because very soon we will no longer be able to afford to aggressively treat every woman who's been diagnosed with breast cancer. And indeed, as I just said, many of them probably don't need aggressive treatment.